When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear in our own languages? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, how can this be? What does it mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men and women of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, for it's only 1020 in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, I will pour out my Holy Spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men and young women shall see visions, and your old men and your old women shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit, and they will prophesy. I will show portent in the heavens above and deeds on the earth below. The sun shall be darkened, and the moon turn to blood before the great and glorious day of our Lord. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You may not always get to see the glory of God. There are those days we know dimly. Most days we only know in part the larger truth that is around us. But then there are days where the Spirit pours out. Pentecost is one of those days when the unexpected happens. People glimpse the holy and majestic power of God. Let's rise together now and honor God with our hymn, Holy, 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 which is number 277 in the hymnal or on screen.
blessed to gather as a community on this Pentecost Day. A few things I want to bring your attention to. First of all, after service today, we have a fantastic opportunity for all of our members and friends called Family Finance 101. It is a great opportunity to learn, to adjust, and to make plans for our futures together. Also, on May 29th, we are going to be sharing a Ramadan fast-breaking dinner with our friends from the Dialogue Institute of Kansas City. We hope that you will come and sit at table with new neighbors on that night. And finally, last Sunday on Mother's Day, we had the opportunity to support a mission of Colonial Church through the Malawi Birthing Center. Over $1,000 was given by this church to secure safe childbirth for the women of Malawi. You still have an opportunity to give, so we hope you will do so. Now, in the spirit of God's holiness and grace, would you please take a moment and greet all those gathered here. Now, it's been a while since he's come up to Chancel Steps, but I'm going to ask Diego to come forward right now. So, Diego is, uh, is now a graduate of high school. He, uh, he graduated this last week. And um, so, Diego, I wanted you to come up because, um, number one, I just, uh, it has been a while since you were up on the stairs up here. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to your graduation party today. But more than that, I want to just, on behalf of your congregation, we love you. And we've watched you grow from that little kid into the big man that you are now. But I wanted just to kind of share, like, I was thinking about like, the memories I've got from the last few years. And I was going to ask you if you feel confident in doing this. One of my favorite memories of you was when that AMC Hump Day commercial came on. Any room you would walk into, it was hump day. Can you, you still have it? No, okay. It was, it, uh, I had to, I had to, this is my thing, I had to embarrass you on this day, but it, um, but we are so proud of you. And um, I don't know if you wanted to share a little bit about kind of where your story is and where you're off to? Well, yeah. Yeah. Johnson County and then KU, K-State, I'm probably looking into graphic design. Awesome. Going to use some of those creative skills that you've got. Diego is a gifted musician, and uh, he's been in the ja jazz band for years, too. And um, we, just, we just ask God to bless you at this point in your journey, because this is huge. And um, looking forward to partying with you a little bit this afternoon at your graduation reception. Anyway, Diego, our new high school graduate. Yay! Thanks for coming up. And do you need any help? Good morning. Good it, morning. How are you guys? Come closer. You know, I like to be close. Hey, does anybody, does this help? Is this working? No. Forget it. I use my teacher's voice. Does anybody know what this is? A map. A map. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know what maps are for? Uh, exploring the world. Exploring the world. Where's this one from, Meredith? Oh, that's from Chicago. Exploring Chicago. Do you know we used to never leave home without these? Okay, in the old days, like your grandparents, Kathy, and people like me, um, would use these so we could find our way. But nowadays, your parents, or even your grandparents, may get in the car and do this. Do you know what this is on a phone? What this part is? 
from a church here across the street to my car, so I don't forget where I parked it. It's this parking lot. But do you know what that's called when your parents put that on the phone? Is that called GPS? Is theirs on the, theirs might be like sitting right on here on their, on their dashboard. And it tells you like, go 50 feet, turn left. you when to turn left, when to turn right, etc. So, what happens when you miss a turn? You know what happens when you miss a turn? What? What does the lady say? I know. What does she say? Come on, everybody. Yeah. Or recalculating. Okay. No, no. And it regrouts you, doesn't it? So, wouldn't it be nice if Jesus could tell us how to reroute? If he could help lead us the way and tell us to go the right way, wouldn't it? Here's another way you can tell your way around. Do you know what this thing is? Compass. Oh, good. The compass. So when I put it like this, I don't know if this is right. It's saying that's the that's the south. That's not the south. That's the north. Why is it facing the wrong way? Elizabeth, you're coming. <laughs> Directions and how to find your way. Okay. There is. You have a good eyeball. Right. So it would be nice if Jesus could just keep showing us the way. Well, in September, we have an adventure we're going to go on. People from church are going to go to Pomona State Park in Kansas on Labor Day weekend. And so I'm going to give you little cards to tell you about this. And they ask me to pass out these little cards. Something's going to happen down there, and I guess we're going to have to find our way. I'm not sure if you're going to go north or south or east or west or if it's going to tell you to recalculate. Do you know that? So what I want you to do is first I want you to take one of these cards, okay? And then I'm going to ask you to take one of these compasses, and then I'm going to answer two questions for you. One says, some people want to know, do they have to come down with can I just come down on Saturday, Sunday morning to worship at Pomona and take part in the picnic? And it says, sure, you can come down. Wait a minute, I'm reading this backwards, you guys. Make it. Can I just come down on Sunday morning to worship at Pomona and take part in the picnic? Yeah. And it says, sure, you can just come down Sunday morning. And some other questions around this have been, can I come out on Saturday and play around and go to church on Colonial on Sunday? And it says, sure, you can do that. So it's going to be an either or weekend. So what we're going to do now is let's say a prayer, and then we'll check all this out. And remember the way you can find your way around? You can use a map. You can use GPS. You can use Jesus. Or you can use a compass. Okay, are you ready for a pretzel prayer? Pretzel Hold your prayer. arms. Dear God, Dear God, we thank you. We thank you. For spending, or for sending. For, for sending. sending. Your son, your son, to provide the way, to provide the way as we journey, as we journey, journey through life, through life. life. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Now, I'm guessing that you did not expect when you came into worship what Nikki did when you walked in here this morning, the story of Pentecost. No one expected what was going to happen on Pentecost. It's the Jewish holiday that's known as Shavuot. No one expected that they were going to wake up that morning and that they were going to launch a movement. There was no expectation of wind and fire. No expectation that Peter had that he was going to be given a sermon that day, calling out for people to change their hearts and their lives. Jesus had not briefed anyone on exactly what was going to happen. The people who had followed Jesus for years, after he died, they were holed up. There were about 120 of them total. And they knew that something was supposed to happen, but nothing more than that. One of my favorite teachings of Jesus is this teaching. Therefore, I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow seed or harvest grain or gather crops into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Who among you by worrying can add a single moment to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? Notice how the lilies of the field grow. They don't wear themselves out with work and they don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon in all of his splendor was not dressed like one of these. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the furnace, won't God do so much more for you, you people of weak faith? Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, stop worrying about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I love that. Stop worrying. Stop worrying because worrying isn't going to add a single hour to your life. Might even take some away. Last summer, summer after Carrie's embolism, I was sitting beside her in, in the bed that she had in intensive care, and I had my phone because I was trying to figure out if that high deductible insurance that we had gotten, because Carrie was moving between jobs, and so there was no, we had a gap in insurance, and so we'd gotten a high deductible plan, because of course we weren't going to actually need that. And that insurance plan was only good in a few hospitals in Kansas City. And I had no idea if Shawnee Mission Medical was onto them. The paramedics just asked to go, and I said, go. And being in ICU, those bills can become bankruptcy level pretty quickly. We hadn't expected any of this. And I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know what I should do beyond look up the details of this gap insurance policy. But these words of Jesus throughout this entire morning just kind of kept coming to me. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Because tomorrow will worry about itself. The truth is that in all of this, maybe it was the shock, but I was strangely calm. Carrie and I, we had made plans. We had prepared that something like this could happen. Not that I expected this, but we had done what we could. And in that moment, I could not change the past and I had no idea what the future was going to look like. All I knew 
is what I can do now in this moment. And that was to love faithfully. And that was a gift. So a few weeks ago, it was a Monday morning here at Colonial Church. And a few people were, we were talking about this and that, and the subject of today's event, Finance 101, came up. And the comment was made that this whole program of planning doesn't really fit Jesus' teaching so well, you know, because we're supposed to live in the moment and not worry, and to talk about wills and financial plans and advanced health care directives, that kind of stuff didn't seem to fit. So I heard that, and I launched into a little sermon. I did that. See, Jesus, yes, taught that we should not worry, that no one can know the future. But he certainly did not teach that we shouldn't plan. Listen to this teaching of Jesus. If one of you wanted to build a tower, wouldn't you first sit down and calculate the cost to determine whether you had enough money to complete it? Otherwise, when you have laid the foundation but could not finish the tower, all who see it will begin to belittle you. They will say, here is the person who began construction and could not complete it. Yes. Worry will not add a single hour to your life. But worrying is not the same thing as planning. Those are different things. Just because you planned didn't mean that you were worried. Those 120 disciples who were staying in Jerusalem after Jesus had died had no idea what to expect. They had no way of knowing that on that holiday morning of Pentecost, that was going to be their spiritual baptism. Peter had no idea that he had a sermon to deliver. But that didn't mean that they weren't ready. That they hadn't prepared. They had spent three years living with Jesus in training hearing the lessons, practicing feeding lots of people, learning to heal. It was a three-year internship to prepare them for what, what was coming. I've spent the days that I've had learning what Jesus taught, hearing the wisdom of Proverbs, So that in an unexpected moment, when I have no idea what worries, what fresh hell tomorrow is going to bring, I was prepared and I could have a sense of calm like I did there in the hospital. That planning, that preparation was a gift that let me set aside the worry and focus on being in that moment. I had done what I could to face this unexpected moment. And so when it came, as these moments do come, I was able to focus on what and who was most important. All that the preparation that those 120 disciples had done over those three incredible years, all that time that they had with Jesus was a gift to let them seize the moment to stand up and speak out and launch the movement that would change the world. Planning, preparation are gifts gifts in those unexpected moments of life. And in a few minutes, we've got some excellent counselors who are here to help you plan, help your household plan and prepare. 
And actually, it was the event, having this finance event, actually kind of spurred our family to do some much-needed updating to our plans because I confess we've kind of put that off for a bit and our kids aren't the same age as they once were and we've got to dust that off a bit. Now, while you should definitely plan, also know that your planning, the preparations that you make for the unexpected, That is a moral act. Your plan should reflect your values, what's core to you. Jesus taught this parable. A certain rich man's land produced a bountiful crop. He said to himself, what will I do? I have no place to store my harvest. Then he thought, Here's what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. That's where I'll store my grain and goods. I'll say to myself, you have stored up plenty of goods, enough for several years. Take it easy. Eat, drink, enjoy yourself. But God said to him, fool, tonight you will die. Now who will get the things you have prepared for yourself? This is the way it will be for those who hoard things for themselves and are not rich toward God. Just because it sounds like a plan doesn't mean that it's a good one. A great deal of financial planning focuses exclusively on the things that you have prepared for yourself. A great deal of financial planning focuses on the goal of being rich in things. A lot of household financial planning is rooted in selfish gladness. And so I am inviting you to think about this a little differently. What good is it to be rich in things but poor in soul? What good is it to gain the world and to lose your soul in the process? Jesus calls his disciples to love God and to love neighbor as yourself. And so does your plan reflect those kind of concerns? Concerns that are bigger than you. Is your legacy continuing to build on what that which those disciples began back there on Pentecost, a movement of teaching and healing for all our neighbors. Does your advanced health care directive, and you need one of those, reflect a trust that there is more to this life than just existing? Does it reflect a trust that there is more to to things than just this life. So I invite you to plan, to prepare. It's easy to get caught up in greed, concern for you and yours alone. But Jesus calls people to something more, a shared legacy that looks first and foremost looks out for God's kingdom, for God's righteousness. And that is a good that looks out beyond self to the good of all God's children. How we plan matters. Our plans are an expression of our core, our core values. One faith. Do you invest in green, creation-minded funds? Do you support organizations and movements that promote justice, work for justice, education, and healing in the world? And if you have kids, have you considered their care, what their care is going to look like if you should die? These are important things to consider. These are moral things to consider. How we live every moment that we have, every the days that we're given, the, how we do that, that shapes us. 
and learning and living in the Lord's teachings enlarge your life and legacy beyond self, beyond greed. And so in the light of those teachings, we plan. We plan for those unexpected days when the gifts of living in Christ When those gifts will matter more than anything else. Will you pray with me? Lord, there are those who are rich in things, but poor in soul. Let it be different for us. Grant us all your wisdom, your gifts, and a vision for a better world. And help us in this life to build upon the legacy of those who have gone before us. May we live the moments we have passionately and sacrificially in your way. Amen. For the living of these days, let's honor the God who teaches and prepares us to live fully. Let's stand together and sing God of grace and God of glory, which is number 436 in the hymnal or on screen. Please be seated. Over the course of the year, we have set aside several Sundays where we've shared a surprise within the life of the congregation. You may remember our first one, it happened the weekend of President's Day when we celebrated with cherry pie after Sunday. One of my favorite Sundays, pie after church. During the season of Lent, we shared little pieces of paper, and we asked you to think about people who had been significant in your journey of faith. Well, we have another surprise for you today. Our ushers have these little yellow forms that they're going to pass out to each of us, and the request is really quite simple. What do you love about Colonial Church? What do you appreciate about this place? What is it about the community that brings you life and feeds your spirit? So the team behind this, you know, it's, a, it's a, an ask for you to share of yourself, and we will ask you to turn these back in during the offering. But this is the stuff that brings life to who we are as a people together.
Because much like Aaron said in his sermon, we're planning and we're preparing and we're actually expecting that the Holy Spirit's going to show up and do something amazing in our midst. So let's not worry about what we used to be or let's not worry about what we don't have. Let's focus on what brings us joy and build God's church there. So we invite you to share. What do you love about Colonial? And there we will see God's spirits rise. Thank you. Call to offer. and bound us in covenant for the purpose of a particular mission. With our gifts, let us affirm and support God's mission. Will our ushers come to receive our gifts? Please rise as you are able.
Will you join me in blessing these gifts? Holy Spirit of God, we symbolically dedicate our lives through the dedication of our gifts. We ask for your bold winds to magnify and multiply our tangible gifts to further your work of liberation, justice, and charity here and around the world. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> this has been a week of highs and lows. From the great joy from our Mother's Day worship last Sunday to the news of Ed Rowe's death on Monday, on Monday morning, our church community has had quite a week. And today we celebrate comings and goings too, and those are important milestones on our journey together. And as we do each week, we take our lives in prayer to God. And so the prayers uh, that, uh, that people in our congregation have offered this week, I will share those. And after each one of them, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and can we pray it together, saying, hear our prayer. Phyllis Yost had seizure and respiratory failure on Thursday night, and she is currently hospitalized down at Menorah Medical Center. Center. She was taken off the ventilator yesterday, and she's breathing on her own, on her own now, and her medical team is addressing several issues that are there, but still searching to the cause of what, something is wrong, and they need to find it. So we pray for God's inspiration to bless them as they search for what that is. Lord, in your mercy. And as the school year comes to an end, yet another school shooting claimed the lives of 10 kids in Santa Fe, Texas. Two kids were shot at a graduation in Leewood, just south of us. And at East High, there was a, a small scare as a shotgun was found in a, in a kid's car. It was just a hunting, rifle, a hunting gun, but it, was, it caused a scare. We live with this. How long, O oh Lord, must we live with this plague? May our prayer this morning move our hearts to do something about this. Lord, in your mercy. On Monday, Ed Rowe's body died after a massive stroke on Sunday night. Ed was here last Sunday with us. Lee was at the first service this morning. Ed was a man of compassion and strength, quiet strength, brilliance. And we're going to be celebrating his life and resurrection here tomorrow at Colonial Church at 2 p.m. Right now, I pray that his legacy of compassion and care continue to make this world a better place. Lord, in your mercy. Then on Tuesday, we got in, and I was invited to the governor's signing of Lamont's Law. It was the bill that this congregation worked on, and I got to go, and it was because of people in this congregation. And Diane, I want to give you a shout-out. That law would not have passed if it were not for what you had done. It was that work that needed to go into making sure that people who are arrested of crimes, that they were innocent of, who served 23 years in prison for a crime they did not commit, deserved some sort of recompense, some sort of financial help to get restarted again. You did that, and the governor signed it this week, and I want to tell you, it was a beautiful, beautiful ceremony. Lord, in your mercy. And the Flashbarth's dog, Neela, who was a canine unit with the police, died this past week. He worked for years with Joel, and Neela served the police with a, what her doggy boyfriend, a dog named Cisco, they came into the forest. These two dogs came into the forest together. I don't know, these dogs' spirit must have been kind of tired. They both died this last week together. And so we offer our prayers of gratitude for their service and for the loss that the flash bars are feeling. Lord, in your mercy. And Nathan Green, a boy that we've been praying for in our continuing prayers for years, Nathan Green today will graduate from Rockhurst High School. And he is graduating on time after fighting cancer for the past three years. And they did not delay his graduation. He has been accepted into the School of Engineering out at KU. And the entire Green family wishes to express their thanks for our community's continuing prayers for them. Lord, in your mercy. Where in your life or where in the world that right now do you feel that needs the attention of the holy? 
I offer you a chance right now to go take that situation that inside yourself in our world to God as we pray together silently. Before we have our community's continuing prayers, I have a couple other prayers that were handed to me on the way in this morning, and I wanted to share those with you too. Phil in our choir asked for prayers for his friend Gary Berry, who was sent and sentenced this last week, and he hasn't heard from his friend yet, and we want to just pray wherever Gary's at now that he feels the Spirit's presence. And Kurt Carson asked for prayers for Billy Mahoney, who is 90 years old and still teaching tap dance. She lives down at the Forum, and she had a psychotic episode this week, and she is now inst is institutionalized and receiving help. But prayers for her as she is very alone in the world right now. May she feel God's Spirit holding her as we pray for her. And then our community's continuing prayers. We continue to keep all people who are living and serving in the middle of war in prayer. And we ask for the Holy Spirit to keep them safe and to help us find a path to peace. We pray for caregivers and for those living with dementia that they may receive the respect and the love that they deserve. And we pray for God's guidance, for this nation's ideals of freedom and justice for all people in these turbulent times. And we pray for all people who are living in the shadow of depression or mental illness, and we ask for God's light of hope to shine. For those immigrants and refugees who are far from the land they knew, we ask for safety and compassion to come from Christ Church. And for the loved ones in our lives who are with cancer and other ongoing life-threatening conditions, we pray. For Evelyn Johnson, Heather Rubish, Sean Bolter, Kayla Ball, Betty Joyce, Andrew Wood, Kelly Hokinson, Nathan Green, Elena Thorne, Mark Tavault, Timothy McDonald, and Lee Frommelt. We ask for God's strength to flow from our prayers to them. On this morning of milestones, Lord, Continue to be with us on the journey, uniting us as we pray the way Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In our walk together in Christian love, we reach, we reach milestones and changes along the journey. That's just kind of part of how that journey goes. And this morning marks a morning of milestones. Two of our youth who have been active in our community these past few years graduate this week. They graduated this week. We saw Diego earlier and um, talk about his humor and his gifts in music. Now yesterday, our other one, Liz Bender, had a graduation receptor here, reception here. And Liz is an amazing young woman. At her core, she, to me, represents leadership the best qualities of leadership. I have fond memories. I see some of our folks who were down at uh, a national youth event a few years ago. Liz was there herding cats, hmm. keeping people together and organized with uh, well-detailed itineraries and making sure an effective buddy system was in place. <laughs> 
She is an amazing young woman. And she was going to be, this is something I don't, we haven't really announced this yet, she is going to be representing our church and the Kansas-Oklahoma Conference of the United Church of Christ going to Germany this summer, where she is going to be with our partner church in Germany. This is a relationship that we, are, that we have not sent a student like this before. This is the first for us. They have kids coming over to our regional youth event in a few weeks. We're sending, some, we're sending one of ours over this summer. It's an awesome thing, and Liz is going to be representing us well. We have, Die we have Diego, too, and we also say, said prayers today for, for Nathan Lee. We have several who are also completing degrees in higher education this year that we lift up and celebrate with. The first is Aaron Hill. Aaron has served as one of the section leaders in our choir, and he has completed his degree, so we celebrate with him. Sophie Mann, who is the daughter of Kim and Rusty Mann, has graduated from the University of Kansas. Carlos Oliva, who is the son of Lisa Ray Turnbull and Tomas Oliva, has graduated from Kansas State University. Keith Sample, who is the grandson of Marty Sample, graduated from the University of Maine. Erin Upman, who is the granddaughter of Jerry and Marilyn Upman and the niece of Elizabeth Upman and Chucho Marquez, has graduated from Avila College. And Dusty Woolsey, son of Dave Woolsey, stepson of Nikki Woolsey, has graduated from K-State. <laughs> Let's hear from our graduates. And today also marks the last time in, uh, of this choir season, where our choir is going to take a couple months off before they're back with us in September. And each week, they prepare musical offerings for our time of worship. But even more so, if you've ever sung in a choir, you know the community that they create among themselves, too. It's a powerful thing to be in a choir. It's much more than just singing. It's all about relationships. Laurel Mundell, um, we just heard her a little bit ago. Laurel has brought me to tears where she has sung at, at services here. She has been a part of our community these past few years. She is our soprano section leader, and she can bring tears to your eyes. She can make you laugh. She is just an incredible human being. We have celebrated her as she was married these past few years, and I have felt so blessed to have her in our community. She has been a blessing to us, and today we say goodbye to her. Laurel, Thank you for sharing your gifts with us and being a part of our community. And may God bless you on the next steps. And that brings us to another huge transition. Today is Marty Lee's last day in the choir. Marty began her singing in church choirs when she was in eighth grade with the first Christian church choir in Republic, Missouri. She continued singing her way through college while uh, in Dr at Drury College in Springfield, Missouri. New newly married in San Jose, California, she sang with the Willow Glen Baptist Church Choir. And as a young mother in Michigan, she sang with the Wesley United Methodist Church Choir and was also the ch children's choir piano accompanist. She was a member of St. Paul's United Church of Christ and part of its bell choir. Now, that's a lot, but she has been since 1984, a part, and since her move to Kansas City, has been a member of our Colonial Church Choir. That totals 62 years of joyous singing. That is thousands <laughs> and thousands of hours honoring God. Marty, I'm going to come out so I can see you better. <laughs> Marty, your commitment and your generosity with your gifts have been truly outstanding. And I want to thank you. You've been on my heart a lot this last week as I've been thinking about this day. And I hope that you in some way can even have a fraction of the knowledge of how much love and respect that I we in your colonial church um, community have for you. Today, she sits right next to her granddaughter, Kenner. 
who I believe has been singing in our choir since about eighth grade. We talk about legacy today. That's legacy. We take those gifts that we are given in this life and we're blessed to share them. And so, Marty, if you're comfortable, if you could stand up too, just to be recognized. And, I've, and friends in Colonial Church, if we would just stretch out our hands as a sign of blessing. Now don't get too comfortable. Stand back up for our closing hymn. It is number 355 in our hymnal. God the Spirit, Guide, and Guardian. Life's journey can take unexpected turns, but we are guided by a spirit that is with us. We are blessed to have a community of people that go together with us on our walk in Christian love. What we, we have said today, we need to live fully. 
to avoid the existence of being rich in things, yet poor in soul. I hope that you grab hold of the spirit that is given you, that's given us as a community, as we make our covenant promises to continue the walk together. So I invite you now to turn toward the center aisle and face and look in the eyes of the people that are gathered here with you as we make our covenant with one another to continue the walk. And as always, if you're not in a point in your life that you can make these vows, that is perfectly fine. Please receive them as a blessing and a prayer that someday you will. We covenant with the Lord and with one another and do bind ourselves in the presence of God to walk together in Christian love. We seek to worship God in spirit and in truth and to love our neighbors as ourselves. With God's help, we will honor Colonial Church in our conduct, support its program, and extend the influence of our life. milestones and honoring them ends now. But our time of planning begins also right now downstairs. Wherever your travel in the days ahead go, go in peace and live passionately and love faithfully. Celebrate every moment of life that you have from now until your life's finale. Because our God of resurrecting grace goes with you always. Amen.